And the young man tried to steal from home. <laughs> they tagged him out and then just stood over him like this. <laughs> and I said, man, you ever play football? <laughs> nah. Where your mama? <laughs> and that was it. And we've been together ever since. As you see, they played for um, four years at Appalachian State University. He was a graduate of Northwood uh, High School. He's one of, one of my favorite guys since I had so many. Well, he's one of my favorites. I love him to death. And I hope you guys enjoy what you're about to hear, Mr. Nathaniel Noah. So I'm not I'm, uh, not too far from where I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, raised here in Atlanta. Uh, went to school at Lovejoy High School, not too far from down the road, down in Clay County, uh, Terra Road. Um, I was raised in a single parent household. Uh, had a fearless, hardworking mother, had an absent father, and I had a brother who decided to take the wrong path. All right. So there were things that I didn't get to see, I didn't get to experience growing up. All right, so we're all athletes, some former athletes, so I'm gonna give you guys a few stats, all right? So my mom didn't go to college, had two kids by the age of 25. My dad didn't go to college, served five years since. My older brother didn't even finish high school and served a 10 years since in prison. All right, not the stats y'all were looking for. And we'll give you a few more. 64% of black African American children are raised in single parent households. 33% are struggling financially. Right, so what do, what do these statistics say? It's about me, about me, Nate Norwood. Right, it says that at least at some point he's going to make a bad decision. Like at some point he may fill out of school, like he might not even make it to college. Right? He's going to go to prison or jail at some point in his life. He's going to have some kind of encounter with a police officer. Right? He'll, have, he'll have kids before he's 25. 
Or ultimately, he should even be standing here today. All right? Well, I'll tell you what did happen. It's that same individual, that same woman that didn't go to college and had two kids by age 25, worked her tail off to put me through school, and is now working for a thriving mortgage company, leading over 15 employees. 30. I myself. <laughs> I myself graduated high school on time. Got the opportunity to sign a Division I scholarship and graduated in four years on time. Never been in jail, never been in prison, no kids, no record. So, what am I saying? Like, I didn't drop all the way down here from the state of South Carolina to boast or discourage anybody. What I want to communicate, I want to hopefully articulate well by the end of this night, is that I want you guys to become men and not athletes. Alright. Because, I mean, we got enough athletes. We got too many people trying to be the next big thing. Alright, we need more men. We need more men to step up. All right? Because, like, some of my players, like, I want to release you guys from this right now. Like, what I'm about to say, I know it's a weight that you carry because I carry it myself. You don't have to buy your mom a house. <laughs> you don't have to support your mom. That's not why she had you. All right? She doesn't need a foreign car. She doesn't need her bills paid. All right? And I know that's the motivator. I know that's the thing that goes through your mind when playing a sport. This is a way that I can provide. This is the way that I can bring something new, provide the way that my family has to be able to get to experience. Like, I get it. I've been there, done that. But you don't have to. She didn't have kids. Your parents would have you in hopes for you to make the NFL or the MLB. All right? And we got some of y'all... Like spending so much time trying to buy your mom a house, and she just wants you to graduate. All right? Some of y'all are trying to be so far in the future, worried about your college uh, acceptance letters and offers, and your parents just want you to pass a class. All right? And the ultimate thank you that you can give your parents, the gift, the thing that can't be taken away, is the way that you live your life. Right? Because the game of football, it can be taken away. The money, the cars, the clothes, the attention, all that can be taken away. No, me. All right? But there are certain things that can't be taken away, like your degree, mm -hmm. your diploma, mm -hmm. respect, integrity. All right? Because I don't know if you guys have heard this before, I don't know if you believe it, but after I say it, it may be something you've never heard. But you guys are more than just athletes. Mm -hmm. I strongly believe that there's something on the inside of each and every single one of you that is more, that you're being called more than just than just be an athlete. Right? Because the mistake that I made is that I found value, I found acceptance, I found approval in my success in football. And I thought I was doing a good thing, and instead I was actually hurting myself. All right? So remember I told you that I grew up with, you know, without a dad. My brother served 10 years since. It started right as I entered high school. All right? So I started longing for acceptance and approval. I started wanting to fit in. I, looked, I needed some confirmation from somewhere, from someone. And if you don't get it the right way, you get it the wrong way. All right? So I got it the wrong way making all these bad and terrible decisions, all right? I was getting the praise, I, 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 I was getting the applause and smiles and the laughter all from the wrong people. I thought because of my success on the field that you know, I would get, you know, I would have the friends that I have, I would have the special privileges that I have, I would get the girls that I wanted, right? I know I'm a good looking dude, but football helped. <laughs> All right. But long term, I found my identity in sport and football. And like I said earlier, it will be taken away. It will either be taken away or it has its own expiration date. 
And for me, my time came up, and guess what happened? I hit rock bottom, man. I crumbled. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I didn't know where I was even going. All right? I went from Nate Norwood, starting to even to man for Appalachian State, you know, bowl champions, some belt champions, to just Nate. All right, people would introduce me as, hey, this is Nate Norwood, he plays at. Hey, this is Nate, he, it always centered around the sport of football. And I know that's happened to some of you, and that's why I really want to reiterate, you guys are more than just athletes. All right. Use a game of football as a vehicle to get the thing that you want. Right? Use it to expedite your process because it's going to allow you to take, to take different turns in a journey that other people won't be, be able to get the experience. Having a full scholarship, I'm standing here with no debt. Not everybody can say that. Some of us may not get the opportunity to play on the college on the collegiate level. It's fine. That's okay. Because the discipline, the structure, being able to work as a team, fighting against adversity, having the game to work at it, those are the, the tangibles. Those are the innocuous things that you can maintain and keep that's going to allow you to be successful in the real world. All right? And so, I mean, the question is now, well, Nate, how did you get out of rock bottom? How did you get out of that pit? Well, thankfully, my mom and my grandmother instilled this habits in church at an early age on up. Even Coach Thomas had this in church. Like, I don't care how late we stayed up, how late we stayed up playing video games, we was getting up for church that next day. And so what happened was, I didn't know who I was and what I was supposed to do. I got back in the church. Like, nobody had the right answer. But I know who did. All right? So I just got back in the church. I knew something had to change. Something had to be fixed here. And that's a, I mean, that's a whole story. So, but the point that I'm trying to get at, there is a creator that has specifically placed something on the inside of you guys to do great things. Like your speed, your quickness, your agility, those are talents. Thing that God has given you is gifting. There's a difference. Giftings allow you to change people's lives. Talent is just something people applaud. See the difference between the two? So I'm telling my players, each and every single one of you, you guys have specific giftings. You have a calling on your life to do something great. All right? And so, just like I mentioned, mentioned earlier, like, if you remember anything from you guys, I want you guys to become men and not athletes. Mm -hmm. Like, hold that. Hold that thought. Live in, in that mentality of, I am a man first. Mm -hmm. Then athlete. All right? Hold each other accountable. Listen to your parents. Say in those books. I don't care how good you are. If you don't have the grades, nothing else matters. All right? Work hard. I know some of you may have thought that I would get up here and talk about how to make it to the NFL, hard work, blood, sweat. Like, nah, that's that stuff. I wasn't going to do that today. I wasn't going to do it. But I will leave you guys with this one quick story. So I, I do work as a coach. I've worked in many different athletic programs, speaking and so forth. All the time I need kids going to me, Coach Nate, Coach Nate, I'm going to make it to the NFL. I'm like, well, how are you going to make it to the NFL? Well, Coach, I work hard. Everybody works hard, right? <laughs> how many of us have done any kind of like off-season training? Raise your hand. That's hard work. I had another kid come up to me, Coach Nate, Coach Nate, I'm going to make it to the NFL. Well, how are you going to do it? Oh, man, Coach, I'm competitive. Who loves losing? Everybody's competitive, right? Another guy comes to me, man, coach, coach, I'm, 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 I promise you I'm going to make it to the NFL. Well, how are you going to do it? Oh, coach, I love the game. How many of us love the game of football? All right. 
I had this one last kid come up to me, Coach Nate, Coach, listen, I'm going to make it to the NFL. I said, well, how are you going to do it? Oh, Coach, I'm just different. I said, all right. I said, what do you mean by different? Coach, I'm different than these other players. Now, I, don't, I, I honestly don't think he knew what he meant when he said that. But what I took from it is that he's willing to do something different than other players aren't willing to do. Right, so the hard work, the competitiveness, the love, the passion for the game, everybody has it. My challenge to you, what I'm going to leave you guys with, what are you going to do differently? What are you going to do different than your teammates and the other competitors, the other thousands and thousands, the other thousands of athletes out there? What are you going to do differently? I'll just leave you guys with that. So Coach Thomas, I appreciate it, man. I wish you guys the best with everything that's coming ahead of you. It's a journey. Uh, maybe some of you may be in my shoes here, you know, 10, 15 years from now. But uh, enjoy it, be present, and have fun, fellas. Have fun.